who you know who does it better than this I'm the boy you done get it I'm on top of the list trying to get a good signal like a satellite dish every day to me it's like a solar eclipse ah, ah. yo so that being geek welcome to my channel about to dive right into a watch mojo video right now it's called 10 top 10 most intense movies you can watch on Netflix okay I watch a lot of content so let's see out of all these 10 which ones I've seen which one I have these flicks will get your blood pumping without you even having to leave the couch. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most intense movies you can watch on Netflix. For this list, we're looking at movies Same currently time. streaming on Netflix it's the that first will keep one you on the edge of it's your seat. Show that Number I've 10, seen. Burning. And Pinilla's are the only chimney guy, so. Is that Steven Yang? I've not watched Burning before. Two that I have been watching. This South Korean drama is a slow burn, no pun intended, although that's part of what makes the results so fulfilling. The film centers on an aspiring writer, the woman of his dreams, her mysterious friend, and an elusive cat. Korean drama at its best. The cat talks? For most of its runtime, the audience isn't entirely sure what Burning is working towards, but director Lee Chang Dong keeps us hooked with quiet suspense that shows rather than tells. This is a mystery that spoons out information, and once we start connecting all the dots, it's chills all the way. Based on its first act, the film's you, conclusion not isn't at it. all what one would expect. It all lines up from a narrative standpoint, though, even if you are left with some burning questions. Number 9. Ex Machina. Do you Seen like it. I like loved it. Mode. Do you like Nathan? Is it streaming exclusively on Netflix now? Yes, of course. Is Nathan your friend? My friend? I... Yeah, I hope so. A good friend. Ex Machina blurs the lines between artificial intelligence and humanity, not unlike 2001 or Blade Runner. Whereas those were large-scale productions, however, Alex Garland's directorial debut has the intimacy of a stage play, resulting in a claustrophobic mind game. The plot revolves around a curious programmer, an eccentric CEO, and a seductive android named Ava. Much like the film itself, Ava is hard to get an exact read on at first. Is she technology's greatest breakthrough or its most dire mistake? When you make a new model, what do you do with the old one? Well, I uh, Damn, she really played download the him, mind, Yo. unpack the data, add in the new routines I've been writing. And to do that, you end up partially formatting so the memories go. Ex Machina leaves you guessing from start to finish, playing out like a tense chess match. Even when two people are merely having a conversation in a room, we feel the dread rising as one prepares to make the other their pawn. Caleb, you have to help me. I'm going to. We're getting out of here tonight. Number eight, hell or high water. All you're guilty of right now is being stupid. Just leave and that's all it'll be. Have not seen the lamp stupid again. This it's Western fine. crime thriller warrants comparisons to No Country for Old Men, although there's no Anton Chigurh in this scenario. Every character, while not necessarily justified in their actions, has an identifiable motivation. The story follows two bank-robbing brothers and the Texas Rangers hot on their trail. It's a game of cat and mouse, but that doesn't mean there are any heroes and villains. We empathize with each person involved, even if it's evident from the get-go that there won't be a win-win resolution. Ah! What did I tell you? Yeah. And therein lies the nail-biting nature of David McKenzie's film. It's like watching two objects speeding towards each other. It's going to end badly for at least one party, but that doesn't make it any easier when the two objects finally collide. You can shoot me now and be with you in your rights. You toting a gun and I'm really glad you're you. not spoiling anything and I can go into to. these movies Number seven, raw. Train to Pusan. Just when you thought zombie been movies so had been exhausted to death, Train to Busan injects new life into the genre. Coming out. Came out. Mm. The best way to describe this South Korean film is Dawn of the Dead meets the taking of Pelham 123. 
Zombies on a train is a simple enough premise, but the way director Young Sang Ho executes it makes for one of the all time greats. <laughs> The characters here aren't just stock archetypes for the undead to sink their teeth into. We come to genuinely care about these people, and our hearts sink whenever one meets their end. <laughs> the action is pulse pounding, the performances are excellent, and the social Little commentary rings especially true you know, in a world where quarantine is becoming part of the everyday lingo. Really? Number six, in this gift. <laughs> On a routine shopping trip, a man named Simon bumps into an old high school acquaintance, Gordo. Gordo? Hey. Wow, buddy, I did not recognize you. Gordon Mosley. This awkward encounter plants the seeds of a one-sided friendship as Gordo injects himself into the lives of Simon and his wife. While Gordo comes off as well-intentioned, he's not what he seems. Just to say that the, the, the bad things, they can be a gift. Absolutely. And that's just the way I like to see things. The gift has the calling card of a traditional stalker thriller, although the outcome isn't exactly what the audience anticipates. The film evolves into something far more complex into... and disturbing, touching upon bullying, misplaced trust, and the past coming back to haunt people. You fantasize about all those girls back in high school that treated you like shit, just lining up all of a sudden saying, hey, Robin, we're so sorry about how we treated you. That's great. You're a bully. It's a layered guessing game elevated by great performances from Jason Bateman, Rebecca Hall, and Joel Edgerton, who wrote and directed the film as well. Open the box if you dare. Number five, Hush. Hush starts off with a familiar setup. An intruder terrorizes Hush. a woman who lives alone in her remote house. What adds another level of panic and unpredictability to the equation is that our heroine is a deaf mute. Seeing no evil is one thing, but hearing no evil is equally unsettling. Hush thus relies less on dialogue and more on visual storytelling. The film is carried by a spine-chilling score, heart-pounding sound design, and a charismatic lead performance from Kate Siegel. At the forefront is director Mike Flanagan, who makes the most of a limited space and a basic idea, turning in a modern masterstroke of slasher horror. Number four, Good Time. Oh, Did good you guys time. have done it without oh, you standing next to me being strong? Oh, oh man. Oh, you this movie came the out of brothers nowhere. know how to immerse audiences in a constant state of alarm. I'm, as I'm expecting Uncut Gems to be in really. this now. Robert Pattinson gives one of his most breathtaking performances as Connie, a low life who needs to come up with 10 grand fast to bail out his brother. That money stays in the safe. That's mine. You get the other 10, I get your brother out. What starts out as an already desperate situation snowballs into a marathon Ugh. of mayhem, with a new obstacle he confronting so Connie around every turn. For the editing, music, and cinematography further contribute to the paranoia, making the audience feel every ounce of anxiety running through Connie's body. The film's like watching a rat in a maze, except there is no exit. Regardless, the rat will keep looking for the cheese until the walls around him collapse. You don't know what I'm talking about at all. Number three, Snowpiercer. Pong Joon Ho's profile has risen massively too. in recent years, and Snowpiercer remains among his most electrifying works. Of all the sci fi films that have explored the clear and present danger of climate change, this is by far this movie. the most provocative, exciting, and harrowing. And the series, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm definitely gonna Curse check it out on. soon. We're out of time, man. You gotta do it now. Set against a post-apocalyptic Ice Age backdrop, Chris Evans leads a group of lower-class rebels across a train carrying what's left of humanity. With each compartment they power through, our heroes take one step closer towards the earth-shattering truth. My friend, you suffer from the misplaced optimism of the doomed. This is going to be good. Snowpiercer Isn't possesses echoes of other sci-fi classics, while also being an Anna utterly unique show you The film the is only made more hair-raising when it considers its real-world parallels concerning the environment, classism, really and corruption. Show you <laughs> The fact is, we are all stuck inside this blasted train. And really justify the evil. That's the crazy part. Medium rare. Number two, Uncut I knew Gems. Gonna be the Safties strike again. Released two years the after Good Time, so Uncut Gems is not only oh. a nail-biting oh. and critically acclaimed so crime flick, it's also a welcome reminder that Adam Sandler's acting chops extend beyond comedy. Let's see what Vegas, what has Vegas got you guys at tonight? Take a look, let's see. Are you, are you serious? You're gonna put this up right here? Look at this shit. The Sixers are supposed to win the game tonight, they think. We don't keep track of none of that shit. Who they think a game seven, you're not gonna get... 18 points. Playing the dramatic role of Howard Ratner, the cinematography and editing with huge is, gambling debts, oh, Sandler's standout performance earned him dozens like, of Besides the amazing story. Is Ratner's dedication to making all the wrong moves in the face of seemingly impossible odds inspiring? Just plain dumb or both? 
Honestly, it's hard to say. Hey, hey, what's happening right now? This I told you how things were gonna go if you didn't start to behave. What? How was I not behaving? Explain to me. I, I'm sorry, I think I was very explicit on the phone about how things were Let's gonna see go. who's number well, one. Are they, they gonna give us some honorable mentions? Mastery of anxiety-inducing cinema, as one critic put it, may leave you breathless by the end. It'll be in a good way. Come on, Kate! Shoot it! Shoot it! Ah! We're all in the mood for a little escapism right now. For some of us, that means mindless reality fluff. For others, maybe a rom-com. And for some of us, it's really intense psychological thrillers or action movies. Hey, whatever helps take your mind off your current problems. Number one is a classic we all should have seen by now. And if you haven't, it is a great opportunity to check it out. Don't forget it's a movie, okay? Let's look at some honorable mentions, and then we'll see the most intense movie you can watch on Netflix right now. We sit and we oh, wait. Oh, more my life. And we die? No. Not if you said you Like, I don't know why I didn't see it coming. We blocked it from my mind. We're leaving right now. No, we are leaving now. Can I see you? I really want to see you. Yes, it's exactly what you think. Just like you killed a member of my family, now you gotta kill a member of your family to balance things out, understand? You, you hate me. And all I oh, ever did was also. believe in you. You know what you did to me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Taxi Driver Unlike some other movies on this list, this Martin Scorsese masterpiece needs no introduction. You talking to me? True. Inspired so many movies, but... Uh... You talking to me? Taxi Driver Maybe. never loses its impact, Todd no Phillips. matter how many times you rewatch Hannah. it. Thank God for the rain, which has helped push me his promotion for his move, in my opinion. I'm working long hours now. He was so kiss ass. Six in the afternoon to six in the morning. Six promoting Joker. Six days a week. That he alienated his audience. It's a long hustle, but it keeps me real busy. If you haven't seen it before, it was great you're missing that out on one of the most intense and influential good, pieces of cinema of all time. When we think of ticking time bombs, a character who immediately comes to mind is Travis Bickle, played by the immortal Robert De Niro. I just want to go out. I really, you know, I really want to. I got some bad ideas in my head. I just. Can't. It's not a matter of if, but when this unstable taxi driver will go off. The real question is, who will get caught in the crossfire, leaving us to Yo, wonder let's talk about Robert De Niro for second. How many movies this is he making? Ride. Do you Lately, agree with our God picks? Damn. Check out this other this recent clip from Watch Mojo. And be to sure so to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest it. videos. That was a good video. Probably like more than 70% of the movies in this list I didn't know, but I will know. I will know, I'll make it a mission of mine to know. Intensity is key. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. Do you, do you know most of these movies? Have you seen them? Did you enjoy them? Tell me in the comment section below. Like if you like my reaction, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Deuces.